Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Devin Nunes dropped the hammer on Hillary Clinton with these seven words. There is only one real scandal about collusion during the 2016 campaign. And it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. During an interview on Fox News Channel, Devin Nunes dropped the hammer on Hillary Clinton with seven words. Nunes appeared on Hannity to discuss the recent developments in the Russia investigation. He was responding to the Democrats' political memo, which ended up being nothing more than talking points designed to distract from the real scandal, the fact that the FBI used a fake news dossier paid for by the Clinton campaign to spy on the Trump campaign. And make no mistake, it allowed them to spy on the Trump campaign. The warrant allowed the FBI to look at emails and texts while Carter Page was a member of the Trump campaign. Nunes also blasted the Clinton campaign for being the one engaged in collusion. They paid money that was funneled to a foreign spy who put together a hoax dossier in order to swing the election. But more worrisome for Clinton was when Nunes declared that, it's clear collusion and no one is investigating it. That was a distinct call for Attorney General Jeff Sessions to appoint a special counsel to investigate the real collusion scandal during the 2016 election, Hillary Clinton and the foreign spy who worked with the Russians to try and destroy Trump. Here's the question he posed. If we look at the memo that came out of Chuck Grassley's committee today, Steele gathered much of his information from Russian government sources inside of Russia. So if I put the two memos together, the new one tonight, yours from Friday, Hillary Clinton paid for Russian propaganda, turned out to be lies, not verified, then used for a FISA warrant, and I'm, like, not only was it paid for to manipulate and lie to the American people but then to spy on an opposition party candidate. Sir, are there crimes committed here? Before we get to Nunes's answer, let's parse what Hannity asked. He refers to this sentence in the Grassley-Graham memo, on the face of the dossier, it appears that Mr. Steele gathered much of his information from Russian government sources inside Russia. There are two ways to read that sentence. One way is that Steele talked to people who worked for the government who shared information they weren't supposed to, in the way that a media outlet might talk to a source in the White House who talks under the cover of anonymity. The other way it can be read is that government officials were using Steele to spread misinformation deliberately. Do you agree a special counsel should investigate Hillary Clinton for collusion? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Justice Department refuses to release Mueller's budget proposal for special counsel office. Judicial Watch today announced that Justice Department refuses to release the proposed budget of Robert Mueller's special counsel office. Judicial Watch is seeking the information through a Freedom of Information Act FOIA, lawsuit. Judicial Watch sought the copy of the budget prepared or submitted by special counsel Robert Mueller. But, on Friday, January 19, the Justice Department notified Judicial Watch that it refuses to turn over documents, stating, seven pages were located that contain records responsive to your request. We have determined that this material should be withheld in full because it is protected from disclosure under the FOIA. The Justice Department asserts the Mueller budget information cannot be released because its release could interfere with law enforcement proceedings and the material is protected from disclosure by the deliberative process privilege. Judicial Watch filed a FOIA lawsuit against the DOJ on October 5, 2017, after it failed to respond to a July 10, 2017, request, Judicial Watch v. U.S. Department of Justice. Number 1 colon 17 CV 02079. Judicial Watch is seeking a copy of the budget prepared and submitted by Robert S. Mueller III or his staff. A copy of all guidance memoranda and communications by which the Justice Management Division will review the Special Counsel's Office's statement of expenditures. A copy of each document scoping, regulating, 
or governing the special counsel's office appointed under the leadership of Mueller III. The Justice Department has thus far ignored Judicial Watch's requests for documents about its management of the Mueller operation. The Justice Department also sent Judicial Watch a copy of a previously published document showing expenditures by the Special Counsel's Office from May 17, 2017, to September 30, 2017. The total was $3,213,695 nearly a million dollars per month. On July 7, 2017, The Washington Post reported that Special Counsel Mueller submitted a proposed budget to the Justice Department, but officials declined to make the document public and committed only to releasing reports of the team's expenditures every six months. Judicial Watch is pursuing numerous additional FOIA lawsuits related to the surveillance, unmasking, and illegal leaking targeting President Trump and his associates during the FBI's investigation of potential Russian involvement in the 2016 presidential election. Special Counsel Mueller's operation is not above the law. The American people have a right to know how much taxpayer money is planned for his massive investigation, said Judicial Watch President Tom Fidden. No one else in D.C. seems to be providing oversight of the Mueller operation. So once again it is up to the Citizens Group Judicial Watch to fight for accountability. WikiLeaks publishes extremely incriminating evidence about the death of Justice Scalia. Democrats want it buried. WikiLeaks has some extremely incriminating evidence about the death of Justice Scalia and the suspicious death has ties to Hillary Clinton and other Democrats. Despite Scalia being known for his unhealthy lifestyle, after his death last year, there was a damaging collection of foul play. Hillary cannot continue with all this deceit, and we cannot let her get away with her rotten crimes any longer. Reported by Thu Winner A former D.C. homicide commander, William O. Ritchie raised some logical questions. Although the man was exceedingly unhealthy, conspiracy theorists were quick to suspect foul play. Here's what you need to know and it couldn't Clinton forever. Even the ranch owner, who found Scalia dead, had suspicions about the man's sudden death. We discovered the judge in bed, a pillow over his head. His bedclothes were unwrinkled, John Poindexter, the ranch owner, told reporters. He added that Scalia was lying very restfully. It looked like he had not quite awakened from a nap. Now WikiLeaks, which has been exposing the Democrats with the help of Russia in recent months, revealed an email Justice Scalia received just three days before he suddenly died in his sleep. The shocking email went on to use the term wet works which is something often used in the military to mean assassination. From one, as a former homicide commander, I am stunned that no autopsy was ordered for Justice Scalia. William O. Ritchie, former head of criminal investigations for D.C. police, wrote in a Facebook post. You have a Supreme Court justice who died, not in attendance of a physician, Ritchie continued. You have a non-homicide trained U.S. Marshal tell the Justice of Peace that no foul play was observed. You have a Justice of the Peace pronounce death while not being on the scene and without any medical training opining that the Justice died of a heart attack. What medical proof exists of a myocardial infarction? Why not a cerebral hemorrhage? Those who dare go against the Soros-Obama-Clinton agenda often mysteriously and suddenly die. No autopsy says it was not a natural death. An autopsy should have been done. He wasn't that old, and the circumstances alone would have warranted one. How convenient that he was cremated. Even the Washington Post reported, Two days after Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia died suddenly in remote West Texas, a former D.C. homicide commander is raising questions about how the death was handled by local and federal authorities. Watch the video now to learn why this means the end of the Clinton campaign. Then share it with your friends. Do you think this conservative justice's death could have been foul play? AG Jeff Sessions makes major announcement, Barack Obama is done. 
Attorney General Jeff Sessions just dropped a bomb on Barack Obama when he rescinded a letter issued by the former president that deals with how local courts penalize defendants. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is rescinding a letter issued by the Obama administration that deals with how local courts penalize defendants. Arguing it was an act of federal overreach, the White House's top prosecutor is repealing an Obama-era Justice Department letter that called on chief judges and court administrators in every state to refrain from giving poor defendants expensive fees and fines, according to The Washington Post. Sessions, in a prepared statement, explained he was doing away with the longstanding abuse of issuing rules by simply publishing a letter or posting a web page. Western Journalism reported that Sessions repealed an Obama-era Justice Department letter that called on chief judges and court administrators in every state to refrain from giving poor defendants expensive fees and fines. In doing so, Sessions argued that the letter was an act of federal overreach. Sessions explained he was doing away with the longstanding abuse of issuing rules by simply publishing a letter or posting a web page. Congress has provided for a regulatory process in statute, and we are going to follow it, Sessions stated. This is good government and prevents confusing the public with improper and wrong advice. Sent in March of last year, the Obama administration's letter was meant to curb law enforcement from issuing fines to citizens as a means of generating revenue. The letter, which was sent to court administrators and chief judges in every state, noted that illegal collection of fees and fines had been receiving a lot of attention, and that the Justice Department had a strong interest in ensuring citizens' rights were protected. Since becoming Attorney General, Sessions has revoked over two dozen Justice Department guidance documents dating back to the 1990s. The documents he has rescinded range from the Americans with Disabilities Act to ATF procedures. He has also restored the use of private prisons and has changed the Justice Department's legal stances on issues regarding voting rights and LGBT people, placing him at odds with his immediate predecessors in the Obama administration. In addition, Sessions has taken a strong stand against illegal immigration. The president is exactly correct about the changes we need to our immigration system, Sessions stated earlier this month. We have now seen two terrorist attacks in New York City in less than two months that were carried out by people who came here as the result of our failed immigration policies that do not serve the national interests the diversity lottery and chain migration. The 20-year-old son of the sister of a U.S. citizen should not get priority to come to this country ahead of someone who is high-skilled, well-educated, has learned English, and is likely to assimilate and flourish here, he added. What do you think about this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Bernie Sanders busted for illegally coordinating with foreign nationals-socialist party assisting socialist. The Federal Election Commission FEC, fined Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign $14,500 for accepting illegal in-kind foreign contributions from the Australian Labour Party ALP, during the 2016 elections. The ruling stems from a February 2016 conservative activist group Project Veritas video showing Australian nationals working for the Sanders campaign on the dime of the Australian taxpayer-funded ALP. Republican and former New Hampshire House Speaker William O'Brien filed a complaint with the FEC shortly after Project Veritas made the footage public, alleging the ALP had made prohibited foreign contributions to the Sanders campaign, according to her. The FEC levied the fine against the Sanders campaign in a February 2016 issued conciliation agreement. The ALP contacted the Sanders campaign according to the FEC and asked permission to allow Australian nationals to be inserted into the campaign as volunteers. The Sanders campaign accepted the ALP's request, despite knowing the ALP would be paying Australians a daily stipend in addition to covering the cost of their flights to the United States. While volunteering with the Sanders campaign, the Australians engaged in political activities including encouraging voter attendance at campaign events, recruiting volunteers, canvassing with volunteers, and planning events, according to the FEC. 
The Sanders campaign treated the ALP delegates no differently from any other campaign out-of-town volunteers and was aware that they were receiving a stipend from the ALP, the FEC added. The ALP spent $16,140 for the Australians' flights to the United States and $8,282 for their daily stipends. The FEC determined that amounted to a $24,422 prohibited in-kind foreign contribution the Sanders campaign accepted from the ALP. A Sanders spokesperson said in a statement to her that the campaign doesn't think it broke any rules. During the course of the campaign, thousands and thousands of young people from every state and many other countries volunteered. Among them were seven Australian young people who were receiving a modest stipend and airfare from the Australian Labour Party so they could learn about American politics, the spokesperson said. The folks on the campaign managing volunteers did not believe the stipend disqualified them from being volunteers. In order to avoid a long and expensive fight with effect over the technical status of these young people, the campaign agreed to pay the FEC a small settlement but did not agree that it broke any rules, the Sanders spokesperson added. O'Brien told Mer Tuesday he was disappointed the FEC did not make a connection between ALP and the Australian government. I'm disappointed that it's not comprehensive, O'Brien said of the FEC's ruling. It doesn't go into the Australian government funding. And I'm disappointed that it doesn't go with greater specificity into the actual things that they were doing. I'm disappointed that they didn't go to what was the effect on the campaign. It's basically the Australian government using the conduit of a socialist party to assist the socialist candidate in the United States, O'Brien said. The FEC's ruling against the Sanders campaign follows the February 16 indictment of 13 Russian nationals who interfered in the 2016 election in support of Sanders and then-candidate Donald Trump. Sanders denied his campaign received support from Russians during an interview last week with Vermont Public Radio. They were supporting my campaign, no. They were attacking Hillary Clinton's campaign and using my supporters against Hillary Clinton, Sanders said.